Welcome to Intergeo TV here in our studio in Stuttgart. I welcome a special guest today. It's Dr. Ilka May. She's a geographer and she's an expert in GIS and BIM. GIS, Dr. Ilka May knows nearly everybody, but BIM is a little bit special. Let's talk about BIM. What is BIM? Can we start talking about what BIM not is? Sometimes it's easier to explain something when you just tell what it's not. So first of all, please, BIM is not a tool, it's not a software, it's not a 3D model. And especially, it is not a 3D model that sits somewhere in the cloud where architects, engineers, and facilities manager plan simultaneously. If we can all agree to forget that, then we are a massive step closer to understanding what BIM actually is. I would describe BIM as a, a different, a more collaborative way of working in the way how we generate information, if, how we share and how we manage information. Information that is relevant to the life cycle of a building or an asset over the entire life cycle of the asset. So that means design, constructing, and operating the asset. Talking about civil engineering in Germany, is BIM just at the beginning or is it a process that's going on? That's an interesting question because BIM is actually not completely new. BIM uses very mature processes, sometimes even mature technologies, and sometimes it's just a little tweak in adding a little bit of intelligence, of efficiency, of doing something slightly differently to how we are used to working, and then we get a bit closer. In civil engineering, we have been very good in the past in using data from different sources, including geospatial data. We have not been very good at managing the information over the entire life cycle of a project. And I think this is where BIM can now bring something new to the table and really improve the way how we generate that information. And that includes um, very much modeling in 3D in the future. Our world is three-dimensional, so our brain translates 2D plans into 3D models, so why not plan in 3D from the start? And also, even in civil engineering, using predefined objects where we know certain parameters of the object and include that. This is the way how we used to work in GIS for more than 40 years or what, and now that kind of working is now coming into the design and construction industry as well. Let's go from Germany to Europe, especially to the UK. You lived there, you worked there in quite interesting projects in London, one with the Olymp Olympic Games and another was through the tunnel uh, for the train, I think. So you had to do with BIM there as well. So comparing your UK and Germany, how you see it? The UK um, published a construction strategy in 2011. And together with the construction strategy, a BIM strategy. And they defined some very clear rules and terminology. And they told the market in 2011, from 2016 on, if you want to work for the public sector on bigger projects, we want you to be able to comply with five or six rules in the way how you generate data, you model in 3D, you use predefined objects, and we manage our information in a certain way on every project. And that is very consistent, it's very clear. And they said, so either you use the five years now to learn how to do that, and from 2016 on we'll do it, or you work for someone else. And that is, I think that is a strategic top-down approach, which is something that I would like to adopt for Germany, because it took all the uncertainty out of the market, and it gave the market a very clear direction do it or don't, it's your choice. But if you do it, that's the way how we want it. You hosted a BIM talk here at Intergeo today, and this was quite a topic at the talk, how to do that in Germany, how to get the data, how to get the rules. There's a still a long way ahead in Germany. Yes, there's still a long, <laughs> there's still a lot of work to do. Um, I think there's a lot of work has been done in other countries. Um, we can now just refer to existing standards, process standards, data standards, open standards, and that's very important. So that's not something we need to reinvent. We can use what others have done. We can look and we can learn. And then we need to identify what fits us, what is good for us, and how do we implement it here. And I think, especially during the talk, um, we just saw everyone agreed 
it is not technology that is holding us back. It is, it's the people side, it is our culture, and it is how we as people adopt change. And are we willing to change? Are we risk averse? Do we see it as a risk or do we rather see it as a chance? So this is still a lot of work in the industry that is concerning the topic. So you are working, talking about work, you are working in Germany on this topic now with companies in a very unique uh, group, I think. Yes, that's correct. Um, we tried, we wanted to copy the UK approach and we wanted to have a task force that on behalf of the government and funded by the government would accelerate and coordinate all these activities around standards, about education and about everything we have to do and do it on behalf. That was a mechanism that didn't work in Germany and what happened then is absolutely extraordinary because these associations and national chambers in Germany, from the architects, the consulting engineers, the contractors, um, construction software, so you name them, across the entire value chain of construction, they all came together, sat around the table, 14 of these associations, and they founded and they started a company all together, and they are now all stakeholders of this company, it's called Plan and Bauen 4.0, and I'm currently the managing director of this company, and that's pretty unique. Pretty unique is uh, you being here at the Intergeo. You talked about the geospatial world and uh, making a relationship between uh, BIM, uh, civil engineering, and geospatial data. How you see the actual situation now here at the Intergeo? I realize that there is a lot of talk here about BIM, interestingly, um, and also about smart cities and the future and about big data. And I think that's very, really interesting because um, what the construction industry can provide is highly accurate, quality assured data about individual assets, construction assets like bridges or buildings, you name them. What we need then from the cities and from geospatial is the big data, is the, the feedback loop from how do these assets perform in the city context? Do they actually, can we actually transport these 5,000 people uh, in a certain time? And does the hospital, can we actually do so many operations per day and host that many patients per day? And that feedback loop into the planning process, I think is absolutely vital and important. Dr. Ilke May, thank you for you being here. It was great. And thank you for watching. See you the next time. Bye-bye.